Hi folks, welcome to the cam video on making the soft jaws for our threaded pin. I'm going to make one change to this soft jaw, which is that um, hopefully we are not going to have a burr here because on the lathe side we can handle that with a little chamfer, but anytime you're making um, a design like this, <clears throat> You don't don't you know, stack the deck in your favor. So let's just make one quick edit here. I'll activate this R for rectangle. We're going to use this slitting saw, 0.064. Doesn't need to be much, just a little thing, um, and we'll probably I guess have to turn off our. Ooh, this could this could be another one of those. Um, glitches here where it's going to actually end up yeah folks, the fusion folks have got to fix this because um, I'm doing an extrude cut here that's going to actually cut away my part which isn't um, which isn't true and I don't really want to pay in the butt to turn all these patterned instances off anyways not the worst thing in the world that I like better though the other crazy thing which I meant to mention in the CAD video is look at this we're, we're still in our clamp. So if you right click on the threaded pin and do unisolate and turn off our soft jaw, you know, this is our part. So if I make parametric changes to that, they'll flow through to this little soft jaw that's here in the file. It's kind of weird. So cam, you can see we've got some other cam ops from other things we've been working on in the clamp. Very useful as well. New setup. Make sure you pick your body of what you're working on. And this is why you have to do that because there are literally hundreds of bodies or, or dozens at least in this file and it, you need to tell it what you're working on here. I'm gonna do relative size box with no additional stock because I know, uh, you can see it here, it's a six by two by one piece of material. Um, here's my new setup. I'm gonna call it machining soft jaw. It's active good. Simple folks, 2D adaptive clearing, shear hog this bad boy. The filters are not helpful, frankly. Click okay, um, click that face. Now let's see here, I think it's gonna actually, it's a good example of where it's actually, oops. Heights, I've screwed up my Oh, this one's okay. I'd screwed up my height defaults and I've got to go fix that. I think we'll take a look at the simulation that I screwed up. Um, it's going to cut in here because it sees that that plane is right there. So let's do a quick simulation. In fact, I don't even want the stock on. Yeah, so you can see there it's cutting in because it saw the toolpath as that. And that's the problem with 2D adaptive is it doesn't obey the solid model. So let's click 3D adaptive. And now all I've got to do is pick my bottom height. And one of the defaults that you really want to have is flat area detection, in my opinion. Uh, my shear hog recipe for now is going to be 0.2, 0.2, and I'm only going to leave 10,000 stock. Boom, boom, boom. I think we're good there. Now let's see what we get. I like that better, I think. One of the reasons um, I delete this later is that by creating the new op first, it pulls in the old tool that I just had selected, which is kind of nice. Now let's do a rapid sim through and take a look that looks great and one of the things i also like to do is uh, we were emphasizing this we've been um, offering a lot of cnc training lately if you can come into uh, we do these two and three day classes and we've been emphasizing turn off your you want to turn off your body that light bulb thing is broken there it needs fixed but um, right here see how that is a subtle difference but you want to turn that off to make sure your solid body isn't showing um, something that is actually has been machined away. Basically, you can get a sort of a false reading on your simulation. Okay, that's good. Now let's come in. 
2D contour. I'll use tool 32. Geometry, let's pick that line. Looks good. Um, I'm going to take it easy because I want this to be a nice um, finish. Actually, you know, instead of depth, we'll just take a couple passes. Height, selection. What we'll do is I'll pick this plane plus 0.01, or 0.05. So we'll say 5 thou off that bottom plane. The shear hog doesn't leave a perfect floor, and I want to clean that up. So that's a good horizontal candidate. Same tool, geometry, we'll pick. Machining boundary, height selection here, and I don't, it, well here, I'll click OK. It's actually perfect, looks good. Now the question is, what do you want to do first? If we do the horizontal first, it'll leave, um, oh, so sorry, when we do a horizontal, we also want to stay, that's what I want to mention. Stock to leave radial of four thousand, or you know, ten thousand. Okay, because when I do the horizontal, I only want to cut on the floor. I'm going to leave that sidewall alone because that sidewall gets handled in the 2D contour, and I'm going to do uh, the horizontal first, then the sidewall. We've got to put these ten holes in there, eleven actually. And here's the thing: I don't want to just pocket them with an end mill because I hate plunging and I hate, or helical ramping is fine, but it's slower. So we use these longer um, carbide, so the pretty stiff spot drills. And it's a 90 degree, so if it's a 3 8 inch diameter tool, I know my shoulder is 0.1875. So I can go down to say 0.17 and I'm not going to even touch the 3 um, 8 inch diameter because I do want to machine that for a better fit. So I'm going to do Drilling, pick my tool, 110, and if I pick the first hole, I can pick same, select same diameter, it does all of those guys, and I'm going to override the depth. Uh, I like to do from selection, it just tells me I know exactly where I'm at, and I'll go negative 0.17, and make sure, yep, that's fine. Now what I can do is come in with 2D contour with say tool 31 and I'll click one of these. Um, heights should all be fine. A top height I can do a selection of here so it doesn't, um, it knows how it can plunge. Lead in, I think that'll be okay. Top height, oops, bottom height would be selected contour. This one, I'm actually going to pattern, so I don't have to pick all of my geometry. So I'll right click, add a new pattern. Ooh, let's see. Can I type in num pins? I've, I don't think so. Oh, that would be that would be cool. Uh, num pins. No, that would be okay. I'll, I'll have to tell the folks at Fusion to see if they could pull that in. Because being, yeah, that's a bummer. That would be super cool. I, 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 I hope they can figure that out. 11 and, uh, well, now actually it stinks because I actually don't know the distance. Um, to be honest with you. So I click on one of these and one of these, and the distance is 0.55. So edit 0.55. Looks good. Um, let's do a cleanup pass though on that. That way, I hope they get a good fit, a better surface finish. So, finish, repeat finishing pass here. Cool. And there's my pattern for those. Are we good? Yeah, I think we just got to do the slitting saw. 2D contour. I'll pick that edge, and it'll be tool. I changed it here. I guess the filters are helpful. 111. 
Now I have the feeds and speeds in here, but folks, this is where you can check out a link to our speeds and feeds video series. But this is speeds and feeds on slitting saws are easy um, when you break it down. So take a look here where this Excel file is available to download from that series. The two inch tool. Let's take one thou per tooth, 48 te uh, teeth or flutes, and let's not go 5100. You know, s start slow, 750. So 750 would be 36 inches a minute. That's fast. Why is it fast? You've got so many teeth, you don't want to rub. I don't want to go that fast. I'm going to go to half a thou. Um, that's about as small as you want to take, and uh, less than that you're going to rub. So that's 750 RPMs at 18 inches a minute. That's, I think, what, what, what I've got programmed in here. And we should be good. Again, I screwed up my heights thing. Top height can be that click OK might actually give me two nope yep perfect and I can check that so now what I'll do oh I did not want to pattern that so I can drag that out of the pattern here and what I'll do now is just one last rapid sim just through everything and take a look turn go to tail again turn off your model to make sure it's not showing you something else let's go make some chips and click here to watch the uh, machining footage. Otherwise, folks, take care. Appreciate it. See you next Wednesday.